And then she goes, but strings are immutable. And the whole room just, oh, yeah, I got to go. There's somebody here. Bye. So anyway, um, hey, how you doing? This is Tom Ballator. I am here with the first walkthrough in a series of walkthroughs that will be coming out over the coming weeks. This one is for problem number one in PSET 1. What I'd like to do first, though, is preface with a few general comments about walkthroughs, what they are. First of all, they're intended for those among you who are less comfortable with the material. Whether you've never done computer science before, programming before, or whether you did it a long time ago, maybe you forgot it, whether you're just looking for a brush up, it's for those of you who have come to PSET 1 and are thinking, what did I get into when I signed up for this course? Okay, um, hopefully um, we'll get you on the right track. And that's my second point here. You won't find answers to the PSETs here. That obviously is not something we want to do. But what we do want to do is to guide you, to give you hints that will get you onto the right path to finding your own answers. That's really what it's all about. Um, the third thing I think is very important that you have to make sure that you've watched all the videos and you've done all the finger exercises for the given week. So for this week, for week one. If you haven't done that, just pause. Um, well, you don't have a remote control, but you know, pause. Go do that right now, and then come back, and then it should be a lot easier. Okay. Problem number one. Actually, problem number one, problem number two, problem number three, they're a great set of problems for a few reasons. First of all, they build on each other. So if you get one, then you move on to two, you add a few bells and whistles. Number three, you add a few more. I know some people are thinking problem number three is just crazy, and it's not so easy, but it's just building on the things you've done. The second thing that I think makes this set of problems so good is that they really test whether or not you have learned the core concepts in week one. And that is so important because the core concepts in week one are going to be just used as default in week two. It just assumes that you can use them. Week two, same thing. That stuff builds and builds and builds in week three and then four. All this is cumulative. So let's very briefly take a look at what I consider are the four main concepts that you need to have under your belt when you're attacking these problems, including problem number one. Number one, conditional statements. Uh, aren't these great? I mean, in general, in life, when we're walking around, we say things like, you know, if it rains today, I'll take an umbrella. Um, if it's sunny, I'll take a bathing suit. Who knows? But it's this idea that you can branch through life or branch through a program depending on answers to simple questions. So this if statement is really, really important. So we, we saw this branching programs, um, the true block, the false block. We saw a slide like this, and we did a lot on this in the finger exercises and in the lectures. The next thing, flow control, loops. There was an awesome example in uh, the lecture about trying to get out of the forest and how you could theoretically use only conditional statements. I think if the person went right, they wouldn't get out, but if they went left, they got out, right? So the person goes right. If right, then say you're not out yet. If right, then you're not out yet. You could copy and paste that if statement ad infinitum. And that brings up a really impor important point with programming is that if you're copying and pasting, odds are very, very high that you're doing something wrong. You should not be copying and pasting. You need to abstract away because there are arbitrary cases that you're not going to be able to copy and paste your way out of. So that's a good example. And what we saw in the class was this introduction of either for loops or while loops as a method of controlling flow. So the for loops, this is really, I think, an important thing. Um, next thing, comparison operators. Yeah, you know, maybe it's obvious. Um, you can compare numbers, integers. Let's say uh, this first one, if i is greater than j. OK, so is 4 greater than 3? That's true. Capital T true in Python. Um, is 3 greater than 4? Mm, no, that's false. Capital F, false. But the great thing about this comparison operator, or these comparison operators, is that you can also do it with strings. Yes, there was that crazy word lexicograph, lexic, I can't even say it, lexicograph, lex, it's really lexicon, lexic, lexicographic, lexicon, ah, I'll cut that out, I think. Anyway, it's that alphabetical order, more or less, dictionary order, that you can sort strings on. So if you you know, fire up your IDE, which let's do that right now, just to show you this this concept, because it, it comes up later on in a different uh, piece set, but I think it's important. Um, actually, on my machine, I'm using uh, Spider. So the way I usually launch it, I don't like going through the um, Anaconda interface. I just go to Terminal, and I type in Spider, and that's how I launch it. I... Okay, so yeah, you can compare strings. So let's say the string A, is that greater than... 
the string b? That's false. Interesting. A comes before b, so I guess it's less than b. Well, let's check that out. So b, is that greater than a? Yeah, it is. Okay, let's try something else. A, a, less than b. I guess in a dictionary it would come before it, so yeah. Okay, well, how about capital A? That's certainly greater than a little ol' A, huh? Oops, no it's not. And actually, if you want to dig into this later, you can see that in the Unicode, well, ASCII, the Unicode, Unicode, not corn, old order, Unicode, Unicode order, that's hard to say, the Unicode order, that um, the capital letters uh, actually come before the small letters in terms of their code that Python is using to order them here. Anyway, the main point that you have to get here is that you can compare things. And for this problem set, we're working a lot on strings. That's my next point, actually. Operations on strings is an important thing, that you can compare strings, elements of strings, against each other. And that's obviously the key for solving most of these problems. Operations on strings, yeah, you can concatenate them, add them together, put one on the other, put one on the back of the other one. You can multiply them. So three times Eric became one string, Eric, Eric, Eric. Um, Length, of course. This indexing, this is awesome, isn't it? Um, the strange thing, of course, is that indexing starts at zero in Python. So if we looked at the index one in square brackets of a string Eric, the answer is not E, but rather R. That's, I think it's based on C, which Python is written on. C, whenever they developed that, they just said, let zero be the original index. In other languages like Fortran, um, uh, MATLAB, maybe R, yeah, R, um, indexing starts at one. So it's a little bit um, counterintuitive, perhaps, but something you just got to get used to. Uh, slicing. This is really going to be the key for your Bob thing here, huh? When you're looking for Bob, you're looking for a slice of a string called Bob. So you got to know how to do slicing. So for this uh, example here, Eric, we've got 1 colon 3 that takes a slice. Uh, well, you know it starts at R, so R-I-C, right? No. This last one is, of course, non inclusive. So it goes up to but not including three. So those concepts were presented in the lecture. They were teased out in the finger exercises. So you are ready to go. So let's think particularly about problem number one. Let's take a look at what problem number one is. All right. So assume S is a string of lowercase characters. Remembering, of course, that when you actually code this stuff, you do not give S to the greater. The greater will be giving S to you. Okay, and don't mess around with S. I've seen some people on the boards doing little tricks with S to get their code to pass, but that is not a sustainable solution. Okay, um, write a program that counts up the number of vowels contained in a string S. Okay, so you've got a string, some indefinite number of uh, characters long, maybe not even characters. Yeah, characters long. Um, how many vowels are in there? Valid vowels are A, E, I, O, U. No Y in this case, huh? How do you do that? Well, I think there are three main cases or three main questions you have to think of. First of all, how do you check if a character in a string is a vowel? For that matter, how do you check any character in a string is something? Right? You've seen this before, right? If we go to the, this was um, in the finger exercises, I think it was called exercise number six in core elements, um, the second part of week number two, we had this really, really nice, um, finger exercise where you had to do a lot of different things. One of them was counting the vowels in Massachusetts Institute of Technology string. There's spaces, there's capitals, there's a lot of interesting things here. So that's the basic thing there. That shows you, I think, a good way of, excuse me, a good way of how do you check if a letter, uh, a character in a string is a vowel or anything for that matter. You can have some sort of if statement, obviously, right? Uh, next thing, how do you iterate over the characters in a string? Where have you seen something like that before? Um, perhaps in this problem, we're of course iterating over characters in school. It's not a very long jump from there to figure out how to do it. And finally, how do you keep track of vowels? How do you count something that you're doing? Again, this goes back to that concept of uh, an if statement. You know, if something is a vowel, then add something to a tally. If not, don't do that. And of course, You've seen this before. We've had counters, number of vowels plus equals one. So that's incrementing number of vowels up. Okay, so that's problem one. Number two is a little bit more involved. Number three is a little bit more involved. So I'll be talking a little bit more then. Okay, take it easy and good luck on the problem set.